the character of social relations today, if we're talking, if we're specifically talking about the question of global pluralism, which for me is major because I believe that basically all of the chaos in politics, economics, global, like all of these things are tied to the inability to deal with the reality of global pluralism, according to something that doesn't fall back on um, old models of dealing with that, which well, ultimately requires world war, I hate to say, and military and violence and segregation, you know, all of these kind of breakdown of trade, you know, a lot of different problems arise, uh, which would be a different topic. But I think we see that we see a certain uh, global political regression occurring in Hegel. In Hegel, if you don't undergo the negation suppletion, what it is called for, you fall back. And the problem is when you fall back, you don't fall back in the same way. You fall back with greater consequence. Because you in the same, it's kind of very similar, you could say, in Christianity, which is for us, you know, you could say when a saint sins, a demon is born. You know, a, for a saint to sin is very different for just an, an average person to sin, right? So, like, the more you progress in history, this is like, you know, Hegel is often seen as like, oh, he's progressive. History has a march of progress. And yeah, that's all there. But there's absolutely the possibility of regression. The problem is when you regress because you've progressed the consequences are much more dire. So it is very important to get it right uh, because if you don't and you regress, the consequences can be, can be large. Um, now, so what, what we see is, so to me, what, what is all being suggested is that the quality of global pluralistic relationships take on the quality of the artistic act versus the business exchange. And this is very important because most exchanges, most social exchanges, are according to the mode of exchange of business, the commodity, like even like exchanging information. So what did you do today? Oh, I did X, Y, and Z. I'm trading. It's a trade, right? Like I'm trading with you information. And I'm thinking Koratani where, you know, modes of exchange. And really you could say that human social relations take to tend to, will take on the form of some mode of exchange. And right now, most human, most human exchanges under modernity and post-modernity have taken on the character of um, trade business. You know, so what's the topic? You know, what is the product? What are we going to do? You know, what did you do? Today? I'm trading with you. I'm determining the product. I'm determining the value ahead of time. It's very kind of preset. And education reflects the industrial revolution still. The classroom is about making workers and different things, right? What, what, is, what is the character, though, of the artist? The artist is working on a novel for a long time and people are like, so what are you doing? Uh, I have to, I don't really know, but I have to keep working and something's going to come of it, right? You have the artist in the studio and you're like, that guy's crazy. Yeah, it, it has to be though. Like the artistic act is like you're training, you're reading books, you're getting better at your skills. The artist is also very pluralistic and diverse. They're gathering experiences, they're reading all sorts of things. And then one day, mysteriously, bam, they have their vision. They have their book. They have their comedia, they have their vision. And then it's and then it's like a line is drawn through all the random things that seem to have nothing to go with it. And then it's all, oh, of course, that was what it was all going to add up to. Of course, that was going to be the topic, right? The We'll talk about the phenomenology of the artist a lot. And really what's happening is we're seeing like a conversation like this is a social relation that is more like the phenomenology of the artist Versus the phenomenology of the businessman. Because when you look for the topic, by phenomenology, I mean the experience of the conversation is more of the artist or the business people. But another critical component of phenomenology is the, the study of phenomenology is to ask, what were the conditions necessary for this kind of experience? So it's not merely the experience. You're also asking about the conditions of possibility. So how do you undergo the experience of the creative act? Well, you have to do what an artist does. You have to expose yourself to a lot of different things. You have to develop a skill every single day, maybe for decades, and also in encounter diversity and difference in pluralism, and also face your fears, and also take risks of never making money, developing courage, and do something that people think is strange, right? Mm -hmm. Those are all the things that the artist generally undergoes right? That's the experience. And then the conditions of possibility for them to do that is they have some sort of drive, they have some sort of vision, they have some sort of way of apprehending reality that makes them capable of doing this. If indeed global pluralism today requires some abstract social act, 
And that abstract social act has the phenomenology of the artist, then what is required of global pluralistic social relations is that they have the quality of the artist more than the business person, of being able to throw yourself into something with skill and ability and then work with it until something emerges. What this would mean is that one of the reasons global pluralism has basically failed is because people have gone into conversations or communities with the phenomenology of the businessman. So they look for the topic ahead of time. Well, who gets to choose the topic? Well, then they're, in, they're forcing everyone to conform to that topic. And there are a lot of people who don't see the world that way or who disagree or who don't like the topic. Well, okay, well, this week we'll do John and it will be Christianity. Next week it will be Bob and atheism. And the next week after that, it will be business. Well, no, it's alien. Then, then that basically means that every week, 90% of people in the community will be alienated. It's just, but it's a fair alienation because we trade it off every week. That's not going to work. Um, because what will happen is no one will directly say, I don't want to be here. They'll just start missing meetings. <laughs> They'll just be like, oh, I was busy. I really wanted to be there. That's, that's basically how it always goes. When, when you don't bring into global pluralism the right phenomenology, then people drift. They drift away. They just stop going and then it fails. It's not that anyone ever directly says it fails. They mostly say, oh, it was a great initiative. I'm so glad we tried, but it doesn't work because you're misfitting the kind of experience that people need. But the issue is, again, if you went to school and being an artist was stupid or wasting your, or impractical, then that literally means we have defined a practical, intelligent person as someone who was able to create the conditions of the phenomenology of the business transaction not the phenomenology of the artist. So no wonder global pluralism has failed or it's been reductionist or it's been meaningless, meaning crisis. There is no, there is, what, what, what is one of the main reasons the artist does what they do? They'll talk about meaning, it's meaningful to them. Because there's something about that miraculous moment where the order is there in the chaos as if it was always there when the topic emerges in the conversation that shows you reality is a place where that kind of thing can occur. Reality is suddenly a place where emergence is possible per se. Well, now all of reality changes in its character. If, it, if this kind of emergence is possible in a conversation, maybe it's possible on a walk. Maybe it's possible in the community. Maybe it's possible everywhere. And so the conditions of possibility for all of reality shift, and now it can regain a kind of enchantment as Charles Taylor talks about. It can regain a kind of meaning. For this to be something that the majority of people experience and thus ask, how is it possible? And then the conditions of possibility shift of all of reality. There has to be the awareness of the kind of experience that they're looking for. Most people, when they go into a conversation that doesn't have a preset topic, they do what? They say, oh, that conversation is, isn't about anything. It's a waste of time. It is impractical. So they have a value system that's overfit utilitarianism, that doesn't allow them to enter into the space in which they can have the experience that changes the conditions of possibility of their life to make it more meaningful. And they're practical and they're ethical to do this. They're ethical to close themselves off from these kinds of experiences because they're using their time efficiently. They're being straightforward, right? And so that's what you create in ethics. Um, to do the right thing that keeps you from entering into the experience of Beatrice or moving into the virtue ethics. And so I, I think the consequences are quite dire to not to overfit the wrong mode of experience. Uh, because if you do that, then when you experience the right mode of experience, which is more artistic or emergent or dialogos, et cetera, you will literally in your brain go, that's not how it's supposed to go. And therefore, the proper address to our problems, you will identify with a mistake. And then when you avoid said mistake, you'll be in the right. And actually, you'll be in the wrong, but you won't have the capacity to know that you're in the wrong. And that's, mm -hmm. that's quite a dire situation, I think.